Hey there, my friend. My name is Christina Rafano from nursingsos.com. And in this video today, we are walking through the pathophysiology of type one diabetes, plus the key critical thinking points that you need to know about it to pass your nursing school exams. So hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell and let's dive in. Now I know how difficult it is to learn all of this stuff in nursing school and to keep everything straight. It literally feels like you're on a hamster wheel of studying sometimes, right? And just can't get off. At least I know that that's how I felt sometimes. So I wanna make sure that you know about my free study guide pack that I have for you, which is going to help you so, so much in med surge. Study guides are an awesome tool to use to help you learn things faster. And I have a pack of 10 of them that I want to send to you. So I'm gonna put the link to these down below in the description for you to snag them after you watch this video. So during type one diabetes, the pancreas isn't making any insulin at all. This is actually an autoimmune disorder where the body itself is destroying the insulin producing cells in the pancreas, those beta cells. So with these beta cells being destroyed, the pancreas can't make any insulin. Now here's a memory trick for you. Think A, B, C, D autoimmune beta cells destroyed. Type one diabetes is an autoimmune disorder. This is very different than type two diabetes, which isn't autoimmune. But here with type one diabetes, the body is actually destroying those beta cells in the pancreas. So the pancreas can't make any insulin. And you know that I always love putting pathophysiology into simple steps for you to follow. So let's do that here. Of course, you won't see these steps anywhere else, I just made them up for you to make learning pathophysiology so much easier. I just think it really helps so you can see how everything fits together and connects. So step number one of type one diabetes is that there is an autoimmune response. Now we're not sure exactly why this happens, but in the vast majority of cases of type one diabetes, the cause is autoimmune. So this is step number one, the autoimmune response is triggered. Remember the A in our ABCD memory trick. It stands for autoimmune because type one diabetes is an autoimmune issue. This leads to step number two, where that autoimmune response continues and the person's own immune system destroys the beta cells in the pancreas. This is the BCD in our ABCD memory memory trick, the beta cells are destroyed. These beta cells are the cells that produce insulin. So without them, insulin can't be produced. Think of the memory trick, better make insulin, beta cells make the insulin, beta make insulin. Which leads us to step number three, there's a lack of insulin production. With all of those beta cells being continuously attacked, they can't make as much insulin as they should. And this leads to hyperglycemia, which is now step number four. Insulin's job is to move glucose into body cells so that the cells can use it for energy. But without enough insulin, glucose just hangs out around in the blood and and it can't move into the cells. Think of insulin as a key that unlocks the body cells. So without it, the glucose can't get into the cells. Now here is where things get really tricky and cross into ketoacidosis. So when the cells can't use glucose for energy, they use fat instead. And when fat is broken down for energy, ketones are produced and ketones are acids. Remember, insulin is the key that unlocks the cells for insulin, but if that key doesn't work, the body has to make another key called fats and key tones. And that's a fun little memory trick to help you remember that. If the insulin key doesn't work and fats and key tones will. So we'll call this step five and six. Step five is when the cells use fat as energy instead of glucose. And step six is when ketones are produced because of that fat breakdown. Now, something that's really, really important to know about the body, and this is a big critical thinking point for you, is that the body always wants to stay in balance. It doesn't want to swing too far any which way, especially when it comes to pH. So when all of this fat is broken down, more and more ketones are made, which are acids. 
and the blood becomes acidic. And the more acidic the blood gets, the lower and lower that pH becomes. This does not make the body happy. And this is called acidosis, where the blood becomes acidic. So this is step number seven, acidosis, where the blood is now acidic. And acidosis causes a whole lot of problems on its own because the body really has a hard time functioning when the pH is out of balance. And if you're learning about type one diabetes, you for sure will need to know about diabetic ketoacidosis for your exams as well. And this is what we're talking about here. When the body breaks down fat for energy because it can't use glucose, then ketones are produced and ketones are acids. So type one diabetes and DKA go hand in hand sometimes. So you're most likely going to be tested on both of those topics for your nursing school exams. So click on this video here where I walk you through the key nursing interventions that you need to know about DKA along with the must know NCLEX points that you need to know about it too. And make sure to grab your free study guide pack that we talked about. And if you liked this video, hit that like button, write love in the comments below because that is what we do around here. And as always, my friend, go become the nurse that God created only you to be. And I will see you over there in that next video.